You know, before I launch into this message, we would be remiss, too, if we did not pray for Orlando. You know, we were in service last Sunday. The news had just broken earlier in the morning about the shooting that happened at the gay bar there. And regardless of where your stance is, you know, theologically on positions and so forth, these are people that got killed needlessly. Shouldn't have happened. Some people say, ah, it's the judgment of God. Well, you know what? Done in the name of ISIS, they've killed Muslims, they've killed Christians. So were those Christian people under the judgment of God because they got killed too? So it's, it, it's just it's tragedy, okay? Then you got, then right on the heels of that, the alligator that gets the two-year-old boy at Disney World, pulls him in the water, drowns him. They're on vacation, family on vacation. And, and then the week before the mass shooting, then you've got that, that girl in her 20s who was uh, a singer, and you know she was shot and killed in Orlando. I mean, Orlando's been getting slammed. I don't know what that's all about. But can we pray right now for grieving hearts and families? Father, today we lift up Orlando, Florida to you. God, we just pray your great mercy and grace to be extended in that situation. We pray for the devastating loss of life that's taken place that has impacted families. We ask you, God, that you touch the grieving hearts that are there. We pray that through all of this tragedy that has taken place, that everybody, God, parents, family members of the boy that was snatched by the alligator, the many people that were slaughtered and are wounded, still wounded in hospitals, Father, the people from that first shooting of the girl that took place, all of the hurt and all of the wounds touch those hearts, and we pray that every one of those individuals would look to you, look to you, look to you. May their eyes shift heavenward, and may you speak peace. May you speak life into that situation. May you touch their lives and turn them to your glory and honor. Lord, we thank you for your healing touch and your mercy and grace. It, that you extend to them because you extended it to us, God. Thank you that you're a merciful Father. You're a good, good Father. We thank you for hearing and answering prayer today in Jesus' holy name. Amen? Amen. Genesis 1.26. Let's take a look, look a little deeper here at this verse, okay? God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Have you ever heard somebody make the statement concerning a son, or, or especially a son of somebody, they're nothing like their father. Or, 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 on the other hand, they're just like their father. You ever heard that statement made, one of the two? Well, when the first statement is made, they're nothing like their father, they can look physically just like their father, their dad but be nothing like them. Their ways, the way they function, their characteristics, their integrity, and so on and so forth. And what I want you to see in this verse, <clears throat> two different Hebrew words that are used. When God said, let us make man in our image so that there's a resemblance of what we look like in them. But then not only in our image, but according to our likeness, so that they might be like us. You notice when Satan tempted Eve in the garden, one of the things that he said to her was, God knows that if you eat of that fruit in the tree, that you will be like God. Notice the likeness there. You're going to be like him. Okay? Okay? And that was deceitful of Satan because it was God's intention that they be like him anyway. And to think that they would need to do something else in order to be like him, that was a deceitful statement. And so I want dads to understand something today. You are a reflection of God, resembling him. But you're not only to resemble him, you are to be like him. And that's why the title of this message is likeness. 
the likeness of God. We are made to be like him. Look further. It says the very first thing after it says, let's make him according to our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. There's one thing about God is he's in control. He's in charge. He has dominion. And the very first thing out of his lips, out of God's mouth, concerning man being made in his image is, let them have dominion. Dads, you have a domain. You have dominion, God-given dominion. That is not to be controlling, and it's not to be lording, and it's not to be dictatorial. But it is to be leading, and it is to be covering, and it is to be loving. It is a God-given dominion. And while this message is being spoken specifically to dads, let me include all the females in here as well, because I want you to notice the wording of God here. He says, after he says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, underline the next phrase here, let them, underline the word them. Let them, there wasn't a them yet. Who's he talking about? He's talking about man and wife. Let them have dominion. God wants you as a woman to understand your role as well, is to have dominion over your sphere of influence. You have a domain where you co-rule with your husband. You stand beside him and you rule in the earth. I, I feel like far too many Christian people don't get this concept and live well beneath their privilege as believers. You are to have dominion. Dominion over your, where, where you operate in the earth. If that's your family, your business, your home, your apartment, your house, whatever, dominion. This is my place that God has given me. This is my area that I live in, that I work in, that I operate in, that I relate in. And I have dominion here. And you need to operate and function in that and understand the calling of God and step into that authority and walk in it. Now notice this as well. The dominion has been created for them to walk in. They're not even there yet. You need to understand that there are things that God has created for you that you haven't even walked in yet, but it's there for you. It's there for you to step in. You know, last week I spoke a word to this congregation called release. I have gotten so much feedback on that message. It's been incredible. So much so that I'm intending, after pa uh, Pastor Bill Wilson speaks next Sunday, then in the coming weeks I want to address that a little bit more because there were so many people who responded to that. But this is a season for you to enter into of things that God has already created for you and you just need to have the wisdom and the sensitivity to the Spirit to walk in it. You know, my wife, I preached that message last week of release and then I listed on the back of the sermon card, I listed on the back of that 20 different binding and loosings. One for each week. Well, my wife has just gone hog wild after that. She's taken that card everywhere we go, and she's reading all 20 of them every day, praying. She's making sure we pray together, all 20 of them. I said, hon, you know, when I set that out, I, I, I meant for one of them to be announced each week. She goes, well, we're announcing all 20 of them every 20 weeks. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So she's like taking that, and her authority... Her dominion is saying, we're going to state that now. See, that's what I mean. You don't just allow your life to just go with the flow. No, you create the flow. You speak the flow. You dictate the flow. You are in authority, controlled dominion, and you speak that out as a child of God. Amen? And so the first thing you need to understand is that you're to have dominion. Now, I want you to understand how we are supposed to be in the likeness of God. So I'm giving you a couple other verses to go along with that. Zechariah 12, 8 
It says, in that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. You know, I believe that we're in a day when we are the feeblest among us is to be like David. i got to teach more on that at another time. I can't get bogged down in that right now. But the house of David is to be like God. Do you know the church of the living God should be the representation of the heavenly Father on earth? Amen. We are to be like God. Look at Acts chapter 17, New Testament reading, verse 28 and 29. This is Paul speaking. He says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God. What a powerful statement that is. You and I are the offspring of God. That's why Jesus continually uses the term father when, he, when he's talking about God in heaven. We are his offspring. We ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art in man's devising. So here's what I'm wanting to lay as a foundation. You and I are made in the image of God, but also the likeness of God. We have to capture that piece of it. And that we are the offspring of God and we are to be like him. Does everybody understand that so far? The foundation is we are his offspring. We are to be like him. We're to have dominion. Now, what does it mean to be in the likeness of God? What does it mean to be in his likeness? Number one, write this in, forgiving. Forgiving. Matthew 5, verse 43 says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Right? So that you can be like him. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more than others? Don't even tax collectors do that. So here we are, folks. We are given... A huge challenge by Jesus to do what? Look at that again. Love your enemies. <laughs> Bless those who curse you. <laughs> wow. Really? Okay, yeah. You and I, to be like him, have to have a forgiving heart. You can't hold grudges. You can't let this stuff contaminate you. You can't let this stuff get in here and stay there. Why? Because it will harden your heart. And when your heart becomes hardened, then receiving from God is just out there way too far. Okay? Now, I know this is a stretch, but this is what is so great about serving God. There's a challenge always before us, which leads me to the next point. If you go to the next one, it's the very next verse. Number two, how are we to be like him? Write in the word complete. Complete, number two. Matthew 5, 48, therefore you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. The word perfect is, is the Greek word teleos. It means perfect. It means complete. We're to be complete. So here's the deal. Right now, you and I are incomplete. We are in process, but he views us as complete. He has it in his mind what you are to be like, what you are to be made like. And the Bible says in the New Testament that we are his workmanship, right? So guess what? You know, you and I, we're still in the process, aren't we? And we are to strive to be complete in him. I need to be complete in this blessing those who curse me. 
You know, I was thinking about this. My family's going to really relate to this. When I was reading that passage of Scripture about blessing those who curse you and, and praying for those who spitefully use you and, and so on and so forth, we were away together as a family, if you remember, recently. And we were going down the highway. And, I, of course, you know how I am about the Everybody understand the highway with me, right? Okay, so where do you think I am in the three to four lanes? I'm in the left lane, okay? But here's this guy, man, and he is just, he, my son, you hear him laughing because he was there. It, he was just, this guy was all over the place, right? So, so he pulls up beside me and flips me the bird. Telling you what, I wasn't feeling dad life that day. I forgot my family was even in the van. I was like, I, I didn't do anything with my fingers, but I was like, right? And so here I am, incomplete. Your pastor failed that day. I know that messes many of you up. You got to go to therapy now next week. Say, man, I had this image of my pastor, and he's just, he's a normal guy. He struggles too. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, was, it was terrible, but here I am preparing this message, and I'm thinking of that very scenario. We're incomplete, and we're striving to be complete in Christ, okay? The good thing is he sees us already complete. He's got the image in his mind. He knows what we're to be like. We're his workmanship. An artist knows what the finished product is to be as they're starting and as they're going at it and we see glimpses of it and there are people that may look at us or we may look in the mirror and see the incompleteness and get discouraged and go oh my goodness but the master creator the master artist the master painter knows what you and I are to look like he's got it in his mind he has the image and he's working that out and if we will just keep coming to him that's why he's a good, good father, because he'll work with us, he'll forgive us, he'll wash us, he'll cleanse us, and we will be in process. And when we get into those tough times and we're supposed to pray for people that don't like us and pray for those who want to use us, and we're supposed to bless those who curse us, and we're supposed to forgive those who don't need forgiving, and we're supposed to smile at the guy who flips us the bird on the highway. We're in process, okay? So dads, don't get discouraged because you may not feel like you're as spiritual as you ought to be. You're in process. I want to encourage you today. It's a lot to strive for, I know, but listen, that's something worth striving for in life, to be like him. I want to be like my father, don't you? I want to be just like my heavenly father as much as I possibly can while I'm on this earth. Number three, how can we be like him? Merciful merciful Luke 6 verse 35 and 36 here it is again he's got to say it again but love your enemies do good and lend hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high here we are children of God being like him for he is kind to the unthankful and evil therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful now here's the deal, folks. He is kind to the thank unthankful and the evil. The people that don't deserve it. How many of you know that we were all in that category at some time and are still? We don't deserve it. I tell you all the time from this place, he's better to me than I deserve. He's better to you than you deserve. And there are people in this life who are unthankful, they're evil. I tell you what, I, it just grinds me all the time when, when, again, and I've told you this too, you know, my little pet peeves, here we go. But it just grinds me when you do somebody a favor in public, they don't even acknowledge it. You know, you stop and you go, okay, you could go by. And they just walk by like, yeah, I deserve this. You needed, you needed to stop for me. Don't you know who I am? I'm like, get out of the way before I run you over. Pastor Mike, I love you, but I'm going to run you down, and you're going to be road pizza any minute, boy. Or you open the door, and they just walk in like, yeah, I, I've arrived. Like, I'm going to slam that door in your face. 
No, we're, no grat, unthankful, Jesus said. Unthankful. You know people like that? They're unthankful. And what does is, what is Jesus say? He says, God is kind and merciful to people who are unthankful and even people who are evil. Now here's the deal, folks. If we're going to be called Christian people, there's a four-letter word that goes along with that. It's called nice. Be nice. Even though you don't want to be nice, just put a smile on your face. Even though you want to slap somebody, just smile and be nice. Right? Because we want to be like him. Amen? And what does that all stem from? Doesn't it stem from love? Because the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. You can look past people's stuff and see the need, the heart. You can see the need that's crying out of people inside because of love that bypasses all of that. And that's what we need. God needs to pour in his love to us, doesn't he? All right, number four. How do we be like him? How can we be in his likeness? Number four, lifting. Right in the word lifting. Deuteronomy 1 verse 30 says, The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you. Everybody say carried. That word carried in the Hebrew means lifted. How he lifted you. Carried you as a man carries his son. All the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet for all that you did not believe the Lord your God. Who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tents. To show you the way you should go in the fire by night and in the cloud by day. Our God is a lifting God who carries us as a man carries his son. And I want to encourage you, dads. Here we are. What are we, what's one of our roles and responsibilities that's seen here in verse 33? Who goes in the way before our families to search out a place for them to pitch their tents. We as fathers, we as dads, we are going before our families to search out a place for them to be. Search out a place for them to live. To fight battles for them. To show them the way they should go. We're to teach our families the path they're to walk in. We're to teach them the way they should go in the fire by night, in the cloud by day, in the good times, the bad times, the difficult times, the worst times, the best of times. We're to clear the way, show them the way, and if, it, if we need to at times, carry them. Carry them. This is how our Father does for us. You know what? As a matter of fact, dear friends, I would say this. I would be so bold and confident to say these words. You and I would not be where we were today if there were not times that God hadn't carried us. There were times when you and I, we stumbled and fell, and he was there to pick us up. There were times when it came, came so dark and so cloudy and it became so unclear. We didn't know where to go and he just walked through that darkness with us, walked through that cloud with us and carried us along the way and we just held his hand trusting. We are where we are because we have a Father in heaven who has carried us and been merciful to us and brought us to the place we are today. And God... Moses said, in spite of all of that, you didn't believe him. Folks, don't let us shrink back and not be believing in him when he has done so much for us and done more for us than I think we realize many times. Now, here's the thing. Dads, you are to be a lifter of your families, your children, your wife. You're to lift them. Lift them up. But today, it's Father's Day. I get it. Sometimes the load is heavy. Sometimes it's a little bit much to carry. That's why you've got to cast it all on him. When you're trying to carry the family. And there are times when you don't say anything, but you're carrying the financial load. You're not saying anything. And your wife looks at you and goes, don't you, aren't you worried about it? Aren't, don't you care? 
and they don't realize you think about it all the time. They verbalize it, but you keep it in. You're just, you're just processing, thinking about it day in and day out. They take your silence or lack of communication about it as you don't care about it. They don't understand you carry. You're a lifter like your Father in heaven, according to Deuteronomy chapter 1. But today, families, would you lift him up? Let him be lifted today, okay? Because tomorrow he'll be back in the saddle and he'll be lifting again. But dads, I want to speak to you just briefly. Encourage your families. Lift them. Continually lift them. How can you lift them? How can you bless them? How can you encourage them? How can you help make a way for them? I get it. Listen, I understand that your families also need to find their own way. But as a father, if we're going to be like him, he prepared the way for them. Amen? then they have to walk in it, but you can help prepare the way. Lastly, number five, we'll close with this. How can we be like him? Write in the word holy. Holy. 1 Peter 1, verse 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Notice what Peter says here. Be holy in all your what? Conduct, the way you behave, the way you portray yourself, the way you present yourself. Okay? Why? Because you are showing how to be a father, how to be a Christian man, how to be a husband. How to be a man in the world, okay? Be holy in all your conduct. Now hear me today. That is, some people, they look at that and go, that's, that's, that's so far beyond me. It's really not. You let God be your God. You let him guide your life. You let him be Lord. You let him touch your heart. Holy isn't something to be attained. It's something to be lived out. It starts on the, it's something you just live out from the inside out. God gives you the power inside to live this thing out. He gives you what you need on the inside to walk it out. And he wants you to be the example before your family. Again, this goes back to being complete. Something for you and I to strive for. I want you to stand with me, please, all over this building today as we close. Dads, if you take this message today, very simple, how to be like him, I wrote here in conclusion, this is the process of discipleship. Simple. This is walking your Christian life out with God. This is how you become a disciple of Jesus right here. Here is the tragedy, though, going back to our original text. The tragedy is this, for a man to be made in his image, but never walk according to his likeness. You're made for more. Take the dominion, take the authority. Let God be your God today. Let God be your heavenly Father. Don't be ashamed to pray. Don't be ashamed to lead your family. Don't be ashamed to be forgiving. Not only to forgive, but to ask forgiveness. Let me tell you, there are times I've blown it with my kids. I hope, though, when I've done that, that I've been dad enough and man enough to go to them and say, Hey, I, I messed up. I went to them just recently. Said, hey, forgive me. You know, I'm messed up here. You have to be willing to, to do that, to humble yourself, to get it right, to set it right, to show the example. That doesn't show weakness. It shows integrity. It shows I want to be a solid man of God. I want to honor God. I want to be holy. I want to be pure. I want to be righteous in His sight. Thank you, Father. Wow.
Lord, today. I thank you for every dad present. I pray today that they take away from this service that you've created them, not just in your image, but in your likeness. And God, may they walk in that. May they understand that they are your workmanship. They are created to become complete like you. So God, help us with the things that we can get annoyed with and the things that can throw us off track and the things that would cause us to worry in life and the things that would concern us with our families and providing for them. God, I pray that you would be our God today. You would lift us. You would help us to be forgiving, to be complete, to be merciful, to be lifting, to be holy before you. For you've called us to be that. And Lord, we say yes. We say yes. Here we are. Mold us, shape us to be just like you. Let every person here leave this building today desiring to be in your likeness, in your image. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for blessing every dad here today for your glory and honor in Jesus' holy name. Let everybody say amen. Hallelujah. Two things real quick. Three things. Number one, tomorrow night prayer. Join us for prayer tomorrow night in this place. We're going to believe God to do great things. Number two, dads, fathers, again, next Saturday, I hope to see you at the Perry Hall campus at 1 o'clock. We're just going to have a it's going to be man and meat day. It's going to eat meat. We're just going to just going to do man things. You know, just come out Saturday, one o'clock. We'll see it. It's going to be a great day at the Perry Hall campus. We'll have a great time together. And I forgot what the third thing was, but it's something you're supposed to do or think or remember. I don't know what it is. Next Sunday, don't forget, Bill Wilson will be with us. If you are here today and you need prayer for whatever reason, male, female, doesn't matter, you need healing in your body, you need forgiveness of sins, you want somebody to agree with you in prayer, during this final declaration that we make together, I want to invite you to come out of your seat and come down to the front. Our prophetic team, pastoral care team, will be glad to pray for you and ask God to touch you and minister to you. You'd have a blessed day and a blessed week. Lift your right hand toward heaven if you need prayer. Come down at this time. Say this with me. I am saved. I am healed. I am delivered. And I have the victory. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.